Good morning, church. Happy Pentecost. Let's, uh, let's start off this morning with the song, Holy Spirit. If you guys would stand and join us in singing.
Let's pray. Gracious God, indeed, you are good, you are great, and what a wonderful God we serve. We thank you that we can come and worship you. We thank you for your spirit being with us. Come and fill us once again and teach us to worship. Come and fill our hearts. May this space be filled with a sweet aroma of the spirit of God today. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. I'm Pastor Isaac Troy, and it's a joy to welcome you to worship once again today at uh, Wellington Methodist Church. It's good to see all of you and your lovely faces. Um, if you haven't had the chance to do so, we have attendance pads in each pew. If you can take those and pass them down, indicate your attendance here with us. We welcome anyone who's joining us online today as well. We're glad you are able to worship with us, and you can use our online link um, to get connected as well. We have prayer cards in the pews. Uh, feel free to fill out one of those prayer cards if there's, there's anything that we can be lifting you up in prayer, uh, you can drop those off into the offering plates later on during the service. A few announcements I want to lift up today. Um, so first of all, um, our youth are having a church camp starting tonight, so we want to just be in prayer for them, um, for, for these youth and all who are helping out. They are starting tonight and go all the way to Thursday. They'll be all the way in the church and doing various activities, learning and worship, and so keep, keep them in our, in our prayers. And tonight, we're also starting at 6.30, um, a summer night of worship. We're bringing that back, um, so we'll have a night of worship, just coming together for worship and prayer. And just, just to praise God and sing extended time of worship, 6.30 right here, we invite um, all of you to come on back. Um, it's not the same worship service, it's just, it's just worship, music, prayer. I mean, we're doing a Brandon Lake special. You know, we're going to do all songs by Brandon Lake tonight, so it'll be a time, wonderful time of, of worship. So come on, come on back tonight um, at 6.30 right here and join us um, as we praise the Lord together. Um, another thing, something new that we're doing, at least putting into the bulletins, if you came in here, you got a bulletin, you'll notice that there should be an extra insert in there. It's just a blank piece of paper, basically, right? We are inserting this blank piece of sermon notes so that for, for, to, to create space, right? So you can write notes, write, write down what the Lord may be speaking to you throughout the service, things that he might want to encourage you, that you can take home and remember. So... We're making space for you to take down notes um, as, as the Lord leads um, here in the, in, the, in the bulletin. If you didn't get one, you can grab one in the back as well. So right now we're going to have a greeting time. So feel free, feel free to stand up. Let's greet one another. Once again, good morning to everyone. As we begin to return to our seats, we invite the children to come forward for children's time. 
question for you guys. Do you have a lovey or a stuffy or a favorite blanket at home? Do you have a little stuffy that you like at home? Okay, good. So this is Griffin's little puppy and this is June's little koala and they love them. What do you love about your little special things at home? Anything? It's soft. Do you love to hug it? Do you love to hug it? Yeah. Yeah? Does it make you feel safe? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. What would you feel like if it was taken away? Would it make you sad? No. Maybe? No. You guys are a quiet bunch today. <laughs> it would still be in your room? No. Oh, it wouldn't. Well, how do you think Jesus' disciples felt when he told them that he was going to go away and go be with God in heaven? They were sad and afraid, and they weren't sure what they were going to do without him. So Jesus listened to them, and in John 14, 16, he said, I am going to ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he will remain with you forever. So even though he wouldn't be with them anymore on earth, he was sending a great comforter, counselor, helper, and strengthener. Does that sound like something even better than your stuffy? The Spirit will always be with you. Jesus said in John 15, 26, 27, when the advocate or our comforter, our healer, our strengther comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you will also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. So, when you belong to Christ, when you believe in Jesus as your Savior, the Holy Spirit was with you at all times. That Spirit empowers you and it strengthens you and it understands your every need because God understands you and loves you. Isn't that awesome? The Spirit is always with you. Even if you lose your stuffy under your bed, the Spirit's always with you. <laughs> Will you guys pray with me? Ready? Dear Heavenly Father, I believe in you. Thank you for freely giving your Holy Spirit to me. Please comfort me, strengthen me, direct me in your truth, and be with me all of my days. Amen. Can you say meet me in the back? Meet me in the back. For a treat? For a treat. Thank you, Mandy. This time we're going to prepare our hearts to hear the word of God, so let's pray our prayer for illumination together. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you are able for the reading of God's Word. The Word of God comes from the Gospel of John, 
chapter 15, verses 26 to 27, and chapter 16, verses 4b to 15, the New Living Translation. But I will send you the Advocate, the Spirit of Truth. He will come to you from the Father and will testify all about me. And you must also testify about me because you have been with me from the beginning of my ministry. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. But now I am going away to be one to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming of judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will, and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, once again, we thank you for your word given to us. We pray for your spirit to illuminate our hearts, uh, speak to us once more, um, help us to know you, understand you, be encouraged, and help us to know you're always with us. We pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It is indeed good to be back in worship with you and to share the word of God once again Well, with you. It's been a good few, few weeks away. Good to spend some quality time with the family, with the new baby. You know, at the same time, like, my appreciation for those who stay at home full time with the kids. You know, gross. You know, it's, it's, you know, all the things that, that happen in the house, you know. You see, today we begin a new church season. Um, it's Pentecost Sunday. And we're starting a new season here, the Pentecost. Pentecost marks the beginning um, of the coming, the coming of the Holy Spirit, right? The coming of the Holy Spirit was, this is a pivotal event in the early church when the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples, right? See, Pentecost happened after, after Jesus had died, he was resurrected, and then Jesus was, was rose back, ascended back into heaven, and now, after Jesus ascended back into heaven, we have the giving of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost. And Pentecost um, also announces the inauguration of the church age. This is the beginning of the church age, right? See, the disciples enter into a new era. And Jesus was no longer physically present, like the disciples were used to walking alongside them. But in his apparent absence, in Jesus' physical absence, he gives the Spirit. Right now, the Spirit comes and takes over the responsibilities of shepherding the people of God in, a way of, in the way of Christ and then transforming people into the likeness of Christ. This is the work of the Spirit now. This is the age of the Spirit. So this is the new age, the church age. So Pentecost is also commonly known as the, the birthday of the church. Not, not our church here in Wellington, but the church universal, the church worldwide. Right? The church was born when the this Holy Spirit was given, right? So it's a happy birthday to our church, to, to the church today. We read from a couple of passages today uh, for our Pentecost story. Uh, we didn't read the passage from Acts where the giving of the Holy Spirit, but today we read from the Gospel of John, kind of a precursor of, of what happened in John chapter 15 and 16. Joe Jesus here is speaking to the disciples. He foretells the giving the giving of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and what we just read is a part of a long teaching, long farewell discourse, as, as scholars will call this, this few, these passages, where Jesus teaches the disciples right before he was taken to be crucified on the cross. And in, in this long discourse, Jesus teaches about the Holy Spirit multiple times, in, in fact, five different times. He, he gives the promise of the Holy Spirit 
In John chapter 14, he gives the first two. And today, in John chapter 15 and 16 that we just read, Jesus gives the third, fourth, and fifth promises of the Holy Spirit. It's interesting to, to note how Jesus talks about the Spirit. Right? Jesus, when he talks about the Spirit, we can notice that, the, that Jesus announces, addresses, addresses the Holy Spirit by a couple of different names. Two names that we read at least in the New Living Translation that we read, right? he refers to the Holy Spirit as the Advocate and the Spirit of Truth. So what can these names teach us about the arrival of the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is? First, right, Jesus calls the Holy Spirit as the Advocate. Right? In, in the Greek, it's the, it was the, it's the paraclete. paraclete. And then John is the only gospel that uses this word paraclete, where Jesus uses this word, right? Paraclete is often translated different ways. We have the advocate, where a few English translations, like our New Living Translation today that we read, translates at the paraclete as advocate. We also have helper, where I have an, an ESV, English Standard Version, um, translates as helper. And then you have your King James Version that translates paraclete as the comforter. So all of these words, English words, right, kind of, kind of encompass this, this paraclete. Jesus says, I'm giving you the paraclete. Advocate, helper, comforter, and so on. And, and the paraclete literally is the one called to be alongside you, right, just as Jesus has been. See, the disciples were so used to Jesus walking alongside them, right, walking alongside them for like three years, Right, doing ministry together. And now Jesus is, is going to be absent, but he says, I'm sending you the paraclete, somebody who will continue to walk alongside you. See, that is what Jesus is teaching, right? When he says, I'm going to give you the paraclete. I'm calling the Holy Spirit the paraclete. Jesus is teaching, right, that, that he, we have a helper, right? Advocate a helper. I think about the word helper, right? We have a helper who has been given to us. I said, think about helper. You know, Anna and I now have three little kids. The two older ones love to be helpers, right? They, they love to help around, you know, at the house, however that they can. And as they help, I kind of categorize their help into three different categories. One, the first category, I will call it cute help, right? Like I'm carrying a box. They just want to help, so they may put their little hands on it. They're not really carrying it. It's just cute, right? They're just moving along, helping me with whatever I'm carrying. You know, the second kind is, is real help. As they get older, right, now that there's more and more of this real help, right, like get, get something from the other room, and they will go get it, right, get a tissue, get a water, whatever. They actually go and get the thing. It's real help. You know, if like this past week, we're, we're doing an inflatable pool, just kind of pump it up, you know, and Phoebe here was just standing by my side, taking turns with me, you know, stepping on the pump, and that was real help, you know, trying to pump up the, the, the inflatable pool. The third kind of help is where I call backwards help. The task has already been done, and they insist on helping. So I have to backtrack. Let's, okay, got to do it again. Okay, now do it again. Like, like when I go down to the storage room and get something, sometimes I have to redo it. It's like, oh, they see me go down and get it. Now, now they want to do it. So some, I find myself sometimes trying to sneak down, just make sure no, none of the kids see me and get the thing and come on up so I don't have to do it twice. Okay, backwards help. And that's the reality of the help, right, that, that in this season of life that, that I'm in. Think about the paraclete, right? How does the Holy Spirit help us? What kind of help does the Holy Spirit give to us? And Jesus teaches that the Holy Spirit is given to, to help us. He's our helper, right, our helper who, who walks alongside us, right, to comfort, to teach to encourage, to sustain, and so on and so forth. There's so many things that the Spirit does to help us, to help us. And one of the issues that we run into is sometimes we, we don't ask for help, right? Or we ignore, right? Ignorance. We ignore the Holy Spirit. And that can be too, way too easy to do. As in so many situations, sometimes the first thing that needs to happen is an acknowledgement that I need help. Sometimes we're too dependent on ourselves, right? Pride. Pride gets in the way. It's like, I don't need help. I can do it myself. And so we ignore. It's too easy to ignore the Holy Spirit. And part of a sign of growth and maturity is knowing our own limitations, right? Knowing that, hey, we need a helper. We need someone. We need the Holy Spirit to be our helper. That, that I can't do this by myself. 
I can just go through life thinking I got it all, right? And we need to find a good balance, right, between being independent and then being dependent, being really dependent, fully dependent, so that we're desperately needing the Holy Spirit. Do you need help? Are you willing to ask for help? Or are you willing to humble yourself and say, I, I do need the helper. I need the Holy Spirit's help in my life. Today, as we celebrate Pentecost, right, and Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, it is a good time to reconsider once again our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Right? Are we paying attention to the Holy Spirit? Are we paying attention? I, I love hearing the testimony for, of, from the youth on, on Youth Sunday a few weeks ago, how so many of them set up here to share their stories and how they are listening, paying attention right, to the workings of the Holy Spirit and yeah, how they're encouraged. And so I, I was really glad and encouraged to hear, right? That is the journey that we're all on, right? To continue to pay attention. How is the Holy Spirit speaking and helping us, encouraging us along the way? The Holy Spirit it's our helper. The other word translated here is advocate. Right? The Holy Spirit is our advocate. He, he's, he is an advocate. What is an advocate? Right? The Holy Spirit being an advocate right, tells us so much that God is on our side. Right? An advocate is someone who speaks on your behalf. Right? I'm advocating for you. I think about a lawyer right, who, who, who stands, defends their clients in a court case. Fortunately or unfortunately, I can't say I have any first-hand experience of those. But so a lawyer, right? Someone advocate, he, he defends, he or she defends someone else. This is what an advocate does. The Holy Spirit as our advocate means right, that he is pleading our case, right? He's defending our cause. This probably help, requires us kind of to change our view of God. Sometimes we may think God is, some, He's the one who is judging us, right? He's the one who is deciding whether you're doing right or wrong. But the Holy Spirit, one of the tr Trinity, right? The God, one of the Godhead, right? He is, he is, he's there, right? His job is to advocate for us. He's our helper. He's fighting on our behalf. Again, I think about, you know, like, like with our kids, we take them to doctor's appointment, like with little babies or even little kids. They can't speak for themselves, right? We have to advocate for them, ask the right questions to the doctors, make the right decisions for them. We are, we are in effect, like they're advocates, right? We're trying to do what's best for them, defend them, right? posturing them for what's best in their lives. I think about the Holy Spirit doing the same for us, doing the same for us, defending us, helping us, advocating for us. You know, in, in, your, in your sickness, and your pain, the advocate, right? The paraclete, right? He is advocating for you. We need to remember that, right? The Holy Spirit comes. He's on your side, advocating, defending you, encouraging you. Another one of the main functions of the paraclete is the comforter, right? Like the, the King James Version translates that. The paraclete is our comforter. You know, we all go through challenging times in our lives. Perhaps you're going through one right now, or perhaps you're going to face one in the future. All of us will face that. The comforter, Jesus gives us the comforter, right, to provide strength and hope and peace, even when we go through these situations. I've seen people, oftentimes see people going through great trials, and yet, right, I, I see some people having such peace. How can they have such peace through the difficult things, the trials that they are facing. It's only because possible because of the work of, work of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Paraclete. He, he has been given to us, right? The Spirit has been given to us. And therefore, we can just ask, come, come Holy Spirit, come. Come and be with us. Be in our midst. The other name that Jesus mentions for the Holy Spirit, right? he calls the Spirit the Spirit of Truth. Right, he says, the spirit of truth will come right, to guide you into all truth. Right, John 16, 13, it says, right? Well, the advocate, we see the advocate, right? There's, he, the spirit helps us, encourages, comforts us, strengthens us. Right, he advocates for us. That's the advocate. And now we hear, the, you see the spirit of truth as well. Right? The spirit of truth's work is, is in teaching and, and illuminating and reminding. There's the head and the heart. The spirit touches all of that helps us in our heart and our head. The spirit of truth helps us to find truth. So what is truth and how do we find it? Of course, we always return to the book of truth, right? The word of God, scripture. It's the book of truth that is indeed one of the primary ways that the Holy Spirit, the God, 
speaks to us, that we can engage in and find truth. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth is, is active and present in the word. You see, when we read the Bible, right, when we open up our Bibles or you go to the Bible on your phone, so, so often nowadays with the Bible on, the, on digital formats. However, when we engage the Bible, the spirit is the one who continues to keep the word of God fresh for us, right? This, is, this Bible isn't just a book that we read once and then we're done with. You can read the same passage over and over again. You can read the Bible from front to back over an entire lifetime, and, and, and we can have something fresh spoken to us again and again because the sp- of the spirit of truth that comes to us. He reveals himself, reveals Jesus and the truth of God to us, right? The spirit can, 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 make, can speak to our present situations and circumstances and contextualize the message for us fit our current needs. See, the Bible, it's, it's not written in the last five, 10 years, right? This is not a modern book, so to say. It's right? written 2,000, 4,000 years ago. And yet, it's still, it's still a book that is relevant for us only because of the work of the Spirit, right? Because the Holy Spirit works and speaks through. The Spirit is active. The Spirit of truth is given to us to make these words come alive and have meaning for us. So as much as it is the spirit of truth that speaks and reveals himself, it is also way too easy to ignore and suppress his work. You know, I've experienced that, right? When I rush into the word of God and just trying to read it, just to check it off the list, it's no wonder sometimes I don't really get much out of it, right? If, if I'm just going into it, just read the words, okay, I'm done, and close the book, you know? You see, it's kind of like, why is the, why is the, why is the Holy Spirit not speaking to me? It's, also, it's kind of like the Holy Spirit is sitting at a table with you and you just never bother to, to look up and engage with him. You know, it's kind of it's like a, whole, a bunch of people sitting around a table and, you know, everyone has their heads down on the phone. No one's talking to each other. Everyone's just so engrossed in their own world. Sometimes it's like the Holy Spirit is there. He's at the table with you, right? We just need to look up and engage with him, engage with the Spirit. He's there. We need to pay attention and therefore, this is a good reminder for us. Like whenever we engage with God, engage the Word of God to invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us, He's already present. We just need to posture ourselves, right, to invite Him. It can be inviting Him can be as simple as praying this simple prayer, come Holy Spirit, or anything along those lines, right? Come Holy Spirit. As I, as I prepare to read your Word, Come, Holy Spirit. It's kind of how we pray the prayer for, for illumination each time before we read Scripture here on Sunday. So we pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, may you speak to us. We invite the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to engage, right, just to speak to us. We position ourselves to be ready to receive. And when we do that, when we do that, then we can approach the Word of God with expectancy, right? expectancy, expecting that when we read God's word, that something, something, that God is going to speak to us, that these aren't just dead words on a book, on a screen, right? But these are words that can engage us and speak to us, that can encourage us, that the spirit of truth will speak to us in a dynamic and powerful way. So we invite the spirit into our readings. So today we kick off a new season, a new season in the church year, we begin Pentecost, Right. With Pentecost, once again, this is a re- we, we remember the Holy Spirit is given to the church. So the Holy Spirit has been given over 2,000 years ago, and He is still here. Right? He is in my life, in your life, He's with all of us. We just have to pay attention. We just have to posture ourselves. The advocate is given to us, the spirit of truth. See, so whatever, whatever season you might find yourself in, right, remember, you have a helper. You have a comforter, right? You have an advocate given to you to walk alongside you. And let's allow the spirit of truth to come to lead us, to lead you into all truth, such that we can be a people devoted, right, to listening, to paying attention to the spirit, so that when he says, we do, and when he leads, we go. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Spend a few moments in silence.